because it was kind of intimidating. I don't want this to be intimidating. I don't want this to be intimidating at all. This is super easy and fun to do, and you gotta make it fun. The more rules you put into it, I get it, it you know creates a standard, but whenever you're just doing it for yourself, have fun with it. Oh, What's up? Dude, what's going on everybody? Robert Peary here, and uh, today we're gonna be doing a little cupping class. <laughs> yeah. Tasting medium coffees, tasting light coffees, tasting darker coffees, tasting underdeveloped coffee, tasting baked coffee, tasting coffee you done screwed up, tasting coffee that you done left out for three or four days with no cover. What does it taste like? What does coffee six months old taste like? Taste box coffee. Pour you some Folgers every once in a while. Make you appreciate what you're actually doing. We got an exciting little video going on. We're gonna be cupping some coffee. Now, uh, I'm not going to say I'm the best at cupping coffee. In fact, I actually suck at it. But I kind of go through my process, show you what I do. This is for beginner cuppers. This is not going to be the most to the book, SEA, done been the championship type cupping class. This is for the down and dirty, getting it done. First of all, you need coffee. I chose these two right here from River and French Truck. They're local to me. I say that because whenever you start roasting, you, you really kind of want to focus on who's around you as well and try their coffee. Buy their coffee, taste their coffee, see how it tastes, see what your competition's doing. Not so much that I'm even in business anymore, so Reve is technically, I'm just a customer. <laughs> These are both super great roasters. Reve and French truck, really like them. I think both of them roast on the Loring, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, they're packing some heat. Yeah, got a little Java, got a little Peru. And then, this is super cool too. I don't know if y'all uh, looked into this. It's Scott Rayo's Roaster Defect Kit. Super sick little idea I guess he came up with was basically, he roast one coffee three different ways. So one's underdeveloped, one's baked, and then one's good. What's cool about this is you hear these terms all the time, but in the beginning you're like, man, what, what, what are they talking about underdeveloped? What, is it that grassy taste? Like, is it, is it like where it's kind of sour tasting? Is that underdeveloped? You don't really know what it is. So what's cool is to have somebody literally roast one type of coffee three different ways and then give you what baked coffee tastes like. What good quality coffee is supposed to taste like and then what underdeveloped coffee is supposed to taste like. That's super cool. These are kind of expensive, I'm not going to lie. I think in the beginning it's definitely worth the investment. I mean, it's not like you're going to be ordering them all the time. So without no further ado, I'll make it quick and I'll kind of paste it up on the screen somewhere. Basically, the SCA cupping rules, it's 8.25 grams of coffee to 150 milliliters of water. I usually do nine grams of coffee and then my cups, I mean, once you fill them up, they're pretty much at 150. So I don't usually measure everything out anymore. It's literally pour the coffee in, nine grams each, and then I fill it up to the rim. I did measure it for the longest time, but then I got to a point where I didn't even have to look and I was hitting 150 pretty much on the dot and I just got rid of the scale. In the beginning, yeah, use the scale, get a feel for it. Once you're hitting 150 every time pouring because this is literally right up to the rim, you're good. Take it away. Grind it up. I do a pretty kind of coarse to medium, uh, kind of a medium. Pretty much what I do a Chemex on is kind of what I cup coffee with. Your water should be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So with that being said, we're going to have a little time while this is kind of brewing, three to four minutes, and we'll go through that. We'll go ahead and fill our cups up. Woo! Mmm! There's multiple ways you could do it. One, you can write on the bottom of the cup what coffee it is. You can write on the side if you want to see it. If you don't want to see it, write on the bottom. Mix them up, do whatever you want to do. I'm gonna leave my cups up here in order, that way I know which order they, they were in. Also, I put my cups at a diagonal. I'll show you that in a second why. It helps me as far as pouring the coffee. All right, now, you got the water preheated. It's up to 200 degrees. Start the old stopwatch, and let's go. I usually pour it kind of like a little beer uh, to the side a little bit. That way it kind of gets a little good little twirl. You get that good little twirl in there, it forms like a little, forms like a little tornado, a little hurricane, a little water spigot. We done with the water. Now me personally, I get a little messy. I get a little messy, things get a little messy. All right, so once you get them all filled up, you wanna wait till about three or four minutes before you start doing your first break. Uh, go through there, just scrape a little bit off the top. 
like doing a good little smell through them. Now they have actual SCA score sheets that you can get for your coffee. I don't know, I used to use them a little bit in the beginning, but now I kind of just basically put down on a sheet of paper what I want to use if I'm tracking. Like today I'm really not going to be tracking, so I really don't want to waste too much time y'all watching me like write things down. But just so you know I do, I usually either print out the SCA sheet or I have like a detailed sheet that I made that I kind of go through it. The biggest thing with any of this cupping stuff is to create a standard for yourself that you abide by. If you always use nine ounces of roasted coffee and 160 milliliters of water, do that. Try to stick with the same water every time too because water plays a pretty good significance. This is actually well water, so that's what I normally use. I try not to deviate from that and use Nestle Pure Life, you know, the next week because it all kind of can play in a little bit to change things up. I'm gonna go ahead first off real quick, do the break. Basically, I get down close. I get intimate with it. You know what I mean? I like to get in there, really get my nose going and all that. Do a good little break. Rinse the cup. Do the first break real quick. I kind of pull everything back in at that point. Then at that point, I'll go ahead and basically get all the coffee out. Donezo son. Usually about time you get done doing all that. It's coming up on 650. Around seven minutes is whenever I go ahead and start hitting that coffee. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Right. Meow. Real quick, what I do with this, basically I would say go ahead and get your little cup and spoon if, if, if you want one. If you don't, I mean, just use a regular spoon. You can do the same thing. The thing I do like about the cupping spoons is it's kind of bowl shaped. I don't know if you can kind of see. So you'll see with a regular spoon, a lot of times you'll pick it up and like coffee will kind of be going everywhere. But with this, it's like a good little bowl that just kind of keeps it there. So I usually start left or right, depending on how excited I am about one of the coffees on the other end. And uh, yeah, let's go through there. Do a little dip. That definitely tastes, that's baked, ain't it? Yeah, it's definitely baked. Um, so that's the Scott Rayo Defect Kit. I like that because like, man, you really start learning what all these things are, you know? It's a little grassy, yes, the underdeveloped. Good little cup. One. Is that Red Bay? Is that the Peru? That's a Java. I haven't tasted that Java yet. I kind of like that. I actually just opened that Java this morning. So I haven't really tried it yet. Once I go through it, I'll hit a little bit. I usually clean my mouth out with a little water. I use room temp water. I find that cold water starts to mess with my taste. So room temp water is what I use. You might want to drink the same water every time you're doing this. Gosh, that underdevelops nasty. Woo! Mmm. Woo, that bait. So one thing in the process of tasting, the tasting actually happens in the mouth and in the nose. Your tongue will detect the acidity, sweetness, bitterness, some saltiness, like the savoriness of the coffee. And your nasal cavity detects some chocolate berry or caramel type flavors. So you wanna try to focus on each of these individually. Like when you first go through, try to focus on like sweetness, switch it up. Is it kind of salty? Do you taste anything kind of like acidic or sweet or anything like that? More like any type of fruits that you could think of. 
stuff. Then go back through and like find different things. Like is there a, a nutty woody taste? Is there like this more of like a spicy something like that? Do, are you tasting chocolates? Are you tasting some type of nuts? Like for the Peru, they're saying it's sweet and juicy with notes of caramel, apple, and red grape. Have some caramel or apple and red grape on the table and just kind of see. Do you get that? And that's the whole thing. Not everybody's going to get the same thing because everybody's taste buds are completely different. You may not be able to taste that red grape in there. They may be able to, and that's okay. It's no big deal. It doesn't mean they're wrong or you're right. It just means that you can't taste it yet. You may be able to develop it later on or something like that. For for the Java, it's notes of dark chocolate, mild cherry, and black pepper. <clears throat> Again, have some pepper on the table. Have some cherry on the table. Have some chocolate on the table. Taste a little bit. Have that memory in your in your mind. What does pepper exactly taste like? You know and that when you when you're going through, you can kind of get those little notes. So I think that's super important. So the other thing, when you're hitting it from the spoon, I see a lot of people get like super crazy with it, and I get that, because you're wanting to spray it all over your mouth. You're wanting to spray it all over the back of your nose, your nasal cavity, and all that. So that's why you are kind of sucking so hard in, and you're trying to get it on as much area of your mouth and nose area back there as possible. So one thing that I do, me personally, whenever I roast coffee, whatever batches that I'm roasting, I'll usually take about 80 grams of coffee, and I'll kind of hold off to the side, and I'll bag it up in little bags. And basically what I'll do with that is, over the course, I'll just, I'll just cup it. You know, I'll just keep cupping it. Like, what does my coffee taste like after two, three weeks? When does it start to really fall off? When does that java just completely fall off? You know, when, when, when does it just not taste that good anymore? Sometimes coffees will last longer than other coffees. Which ones are doing that? So that's one thing you should be doing with your coffee, I feel. It's really just kind of, as far as when should you cup your coffee, I don't ever cup the same day. So if I roast coffee, I'm not cupping that coffee at least for four, five, six days. Also, I usually have the flavor wheel. I got a little iPad, it's old as heck. It's like Gen 2 or something like that. Anyway, pulls up the flavor wheel pretty good though. And I'll usually have the flavor wheel out while I'm cupping coffee. That way I can kind of just actually think. This cupping is kind of more of a demonstration. I'm not sitting here thinking about exactly what's in each cup because I'm more focused on making the video. But if I'm focusing on what's in each cup, I want that flavor wheel always up in front of me. That way I can always be thinking about, okay, like we're at on the, on the wheel, am I tasting everything. As far as standards go, I think there should be some business standards and then I think there should be some personal standards. If you're cupping for a business and you're actually sending coffee to customers, yes, you should have a plan in place where the batches you cup are to a very specific standard. There's none of this, you know, you're changing water out, like, you know, tra changing grind sizes. All got to be very, very consistent. Again, I would highly suggest the Scott Rose Roaster Defect Kit. It helped me a lot in the beginning. Thanks again, Scott. Also, just got your book, Scott. Woo! Yeah. So, looking forward to that. I only got it this week. Haven't really started it yet. Went through, looked at a few things, and boy, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm excited. You're going places, man. Never met you, but I thank you for your books. I may do like a book review on it, where I basically kind of give you my overview, things I like, things I didn't like, things I need to research, things that I, I don't understand how he's doing. Cup coffee, have fun with it. Get you a little cup and spoon, because that makes you legit. Get you some bowls. I got these from Amazon. Probably the cheapest ones, whatever. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into spending a bunch of money on fancy bowls and fan, like this is was the cheapest spoon like just something to use you know what i mean i want to see y'all back i like y'all i like y'all liking me i think we're a team you know what i mean almost like my little online friends friends are good you know all around real friends online friends even fake friends sometimes are good the v60 is going to be next probably going to do my full roast review on the bedelli after that by that time i'll probably be in california july 20 something so i'm probably gonna be vlogging that then i'll do this book the roaster series is still coming up that's probably gonna be a good long-term plan i'm probably gonna put a good bit of time into those so i want them to look good want them to sound good want them to be good the the night i cut it off i decided i'm gonna grow it back i miss it i'm, I'm growing my hair back I, I have to i have to have to have it have to have it guys love y'all